Well, good morning. My name is Tom Dubois, and I'm the pastor of Western Mountains Baptist Church in the little town of New Portland. I'd like to welcome you to our Sunday sermon. And I know the Easter season was a lot different uh, than what any of us expected this year. And I hope you all navigated that change. And lots of traditions kind of went by the wayside, but these did not change the fact that the Son of God rose from the grave victorious over sin and death. Well, this morning, we're going to head back to the Gospel of Mark, uh, where we left off about four weeks ago in the sixth chapter. So if you have your Bibles and you want to put your uh, finger in uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter six, that would be a great place to be. Uh, and I'm going to back up three verses into where we left off to simply give us some, some context as we move forward. So uh, we can turn to that scripture. It's uh, Matthew 6, starting in verses 30 and 32. So Gospel of Mark, Matthew 6, verses 30 to 32, and they read like this. The apostles gathered together with Jesus, and they reported to him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For, they were, for there were many people coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Verse 32, Then they went away in the boat to a secluded place by themselves. So to catch us up, earlier in this chapter, Jesus had, had sent the disciples out to minister to the people. He sent them in pairs, and now, in this passage, uh, we see them coming back together to debrief. And the disciples reported to Jesus all that they had done and all that they had taught. See, this is, this is really a great way to, to praise God, to tell of the amazing things that God has accomplished through his saints. These guys were, were smart enough to know that they were not the ones that were accomplishing uh, the healing of the sick and the casting out of demons and the teaching of the word. They knew that God was using them to accomplish these great things. How has God used you? Has God done a good work in you and through you? Well, then testify, right? Jesus then does something interesting. He, of, of course, Jesus, Jesus knows that this kind of work can be exhausting. And so he invites these men to come away and rest, to separate themselves from the masses of people and simply rest in the solitude. And, and they attempt to do just that. They set sail for a secluded place in order to rest. But there is a slight problem. They are being watched, and, and not in a big brother kind of way, more like in a, I want to be healed, and I want to be taught, and I want to be nurtured kind of way. L look with me at verses 33 and 34 of this sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. The people saw them going, and many recognized them, and ran there together on foot from all the cities, and got there ahead of them. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd and he, and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. See, the people cannot get enough of, of Jesus and his teaching and his healing. They, they are on the lookout and, and they spot the boat with Jesus and the disciples and they literally run to where the boat is is headed so that the people are at the boat landing when Jesus and the disciples arrive. I had to ask myself this question. What was going on in these people's lives that they would pursue Jesus in this way? At what expense were they pursuing Jesus? What was being left undone in their jobs or at their homes? What were they neglecting in order to hear him preach and teach? What longing existed in their hearts that they would pursue Jesus in this way? Notice this with me. Jesus understands what this longing is and defines it for us in verse 34. 
Jesus see these, sees these people as sheep, and they are sheep without a shepherd. Hmm. See, a sheep is not really equipped to defend itself against a predator. A sheep needs the protection of a shepherd. A sheep is not an incredibly bright creature. In fact, Pastor Earl used to say uh, when the Bible called us, his people called us sheep, we need to understand that it is not at all a compliment. Sheep are a, a bit dumb. Sheep need the shepherd to, to guide them to food and to shelter as well as to provide protection. A sheep without a shepherd is a sheep that is likely going to perish. And that is what Jesus sees in these people. He sees people that without him, without Jesus, are going to perish. They are going to suffer the consequences of their sins, for the wages of sin is death. So we see Jesus, once again, demonstrate his love, his unconditional, self-sacrificing love to these lost sheep. Hey, Jesus and the disciples were, at this moment, supposed to be looking out for themselves. They are supposed to be getting a little rest and relaxation, a little R&R. &R. But, but Jesus felt compassion for these lost sheep. And, and Jesus put his, his own desires on the back burner and began to teach these sheep many things. Jesus began to meet their spiritual needs. And it does not stop with meeting their spiritual needs. Let's, let's see what happens next in, in verses 35 and 36. When it was already quite late, his disciples came to him and said, This place is desolate, and it already and it is already quite late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. As seems to happen often to Jesus and these crowds, the, the teaching and the preaching went on quite a while. This created a unique problem. They were in a rather desolate location, and it was late. That means there's no village right next door, and there are no shops nearby. The disciples recognize the situation and bring it to the attention of Jesus, like he didn't already know. And, and now, the disciples have already kind of formulated a plan to deal with this situation. The problem is that Jesus needs to be complicit in their plan. See, their plan is to send everyone away so that they could make the trek to any surrounding villages to find something to eat. And I'm not sure that you've noticed, but Jesus was not very good at sending people away. Now, this is not a flaw, but instead is called love and compassion put into action, right? The disciples present their plan to Jesus, but, but Jesus has a different idea. Look how this unfolds in verses 37 and 38. But he answered them, that is Jesus, Jesus answered them, you, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and, and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go, look. And when they found out, they said, Five loaves and two fish. See, Jesus had already shown them what it looked like to demonstrate love and compassion to these people. And I believe Jesus was hoping these guys would want to see the physical needs of the people met. In fact, Jesus tells them so. You, he says, you give them something to eat. You meet their physical need. But the disciples, see, they were missing the point. They were missing his point. And instead they argue with Jesus about the impossibility of the task 
Shall we go and spend 200 denarii on bread and give them something to eat? See, there is serious sarcasm in this answer for 200 denarii worth of bread was not going to feed 5,000 men plus women and children. There was certainly not enough money in the money box to meet the physical needs that were in front of them. They could not buy their way out of this predicament. Well, Jesus kind of, he pivots on this flippant statement from the disciples and instead asks them what is available to them. How many loaves do you have? And then my favorite this morning, go, look. See, the disciples had not even adequately assessed the situation. They saw this mountain ahead of them and simply looked to take the path of least resistance. But friends, the path of Jesus is almost never the path of least resistance. For, for how would God get any glory if everything was easy? Go, look, go among the people and find out what is really there for resources. Do not assume that the situation is bleak and unsolvable. Go and, and look. See what God may be doing in your midst. Go, get off the couch and see how you can serve the one true king. Go and look to see how God may be gifting you to be his hands and feet. And guess what? They found five loaves and two fish. They were not without resources, meager as they might seem. But here's the really cool part. They were obedient in going and looking and finding. And now we get to see what God will do with their obedience. Look with me at verses 39 through 41. They read like this. And he commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass. They sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties and he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up toward heaven he blessed the food and broke the loaves and he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them and he divided up the two fish among them all instead of sending everyone away as the disciples had suggested jesus commands them to all to sit down and to sit down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Now, here's the part that interested me. Five loaves and two fish would not be enough to feed even one of these groups of 50 or one of these groups of 100. In fact, it would not even be close. But Jesus took the five loaves and he took the two fish and looking up toward heaven, he blessed the food. He looked to heaven, see, so that everyone would be, everyone there would know from where this miracle would come. After blessing the food, Jesus broke the loaves and, and, and notice the language here. Jesus kept giving them to the disciples to set before the people. See, as each disciple came to get bread, to be dispersed to the groups of people, Jesus kept having bread to hand out. And it appeared the same thing happened with the fish. Mark tells us that Jesus divided up the two fish among them all. These people are sheep without a shepherd, and the good shepherd is taking care of his sheep. He is literally feeding his sheep. Jesus has spent the day teaching them the word, and now Jesus is also meeting their physical needs of nourishment. He is the good shepherd meeting the needs of his sheep. Look with me now at verse 42, a, a beautiful summary of this miracle. Verse, 40, verse 42 says this, They all ate and were satisfied. This crowd of sheep all ate, not some, not most, but all ate 
and were satisfied. See, it's, it's been a long day. These people ran along the shore, chasing down the disciples and Jesus. They, they then spent the day listening to Jesus preach and teach. Friends, there is no doubt they are hungry. Both Jesus and the disciples acknowledge their hunger. My, my point is this. They do not just each take a, a nibble of bread and, and a, maybe a single mouthful of fish. Even that wouldn't have, wouldn't have lasted. They ate and were all satisfied. Their hunger is satisfied. And we all know the difference, right? I play this game sometimes when I get, get home before Betsy in the evening. See, dinner is still maybe a couple of hours away and, and I'm hungry. So I, so I have a little snack. Now, it's not enough to satisfy, but it's enough to get me by for those couple of hours before dinner. But this is different, my friends. This is different. They ate and were satisfied. Five loaves, two fish. How many did they feed and how much was left over? Just so that we can see the mighty hand of God, Mark tells us in our closing verses today, in verses 43 and 44. Reads like this, And they picked up twelve full baskets of the broken pieces and also of the fish. There were 5,000 men who ate the loaves. Of course, we do not know the size of the baskets, but I think it's safe to say that the original five loaves and two fish by themselves would not have come close to filling 12 baskets. Yet, the leftovers, the leftovers of the bread and the fish filled 12 baskets. See, when God blesses, he blesses to abundance. We hear the saying and we sing a song that says God is more than enough. Here's a classic example, right, of, of how God is more than enough. All were satisfied and yet there were 12 baskets of leftovers. How many were fed? Mark is specific to the men, 5,000 men. Yet, yet we know from the other gospel accounts that it was a boy who likely provided the loaves and the fish. So, so what about the women and the children who were also there? All were fed. All were satisfied. Was it 10,000? Was it 15,000? See, it's all pure speculation at that point, but we know the total number is well in excess of 5,000. See, our God is a God of abundant blessing. Our sermon title, our sermon title today is this, Are You Hungry? See, I believe what Jesus saw in these shepherdless sheep is a, is a hunger, a, a hunger for truth, a hunger for the love that only Jesus could demonstrate to them, a hunger for acceptance, a hunger for grace and mercy, a hunger for something different than the same old unsatisfying rut that they were in. How about you? Are you hungry? Are you hungry for the word of God and the truth that it contains? Are you hungry for the love of Christ Jesus, unconditional, self-sacrificing? Are you hungry to experience his grace and his mercy? And what is preventing? What is preventing us from approaching his table? What is preventing us from partaking in the feast that only Jesus can provide? Is it, is it pride? Maybe it's pride. But friends, the Proverbs tells us that pride goes before destruction. Do not let it be pride. Maybe it, it's unworthiness. Well, welcome to every single person's condition for none of us are worthy. But see, 
That is the point of unconditional love. There are no conditions. Jesus does not wait for us to, to clean up before he loves us. Romans 5 verse 8 tells us that while we were yet sinners, that Christ died for us. On our worst day, Christ died for us. And maybe what is preventing us from coming to the table is that we think we already have everything we need. Kind of like the Pharisees. See, but that just means we're putting our eggs in a basket that can never truly satisfy. If we've learned nothing else from this COVID-19 virus, I hope we have learned just how quickly everything the world has relied upon can be gone in a very short period of time. What mankind thought was trustworthy is not really trustworthy. What mankind thought was a sure thing is no longer a sure thing. There is only one who is trustworthy. There is only one who is faithful and true. And his name is Jesus. Friends, do not hunger for the things of this world. They are fleeting and unreliable. Hunger and thirst for his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Those are the very words of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount and they're trustworthy and true. He will provide you with life and life abundant and full. So friends, let us be fed by Jesus and may we all be satisfied. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we just thank you for, for the abundant life that you offer us. We thank you for the way you meet our needs, the way you care for us. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who provides this path for us, Lord, to, to be able to commune with you. We thank you for his unconditional love. We thank you for his self-sacrificial love demonstrated on the cross. And Lord, I pray for each one that's listening, Lord, that we would understand what it means to hunger and thirst for you, for your righteousness, for your kingdom. I pray that we would understand what it means to do those things instead of hungering and thirsting for the things of this world that are not satisfying that will not complete us, that will leave us empty and will leave us in, in a place that is contrary to your will and your way. Guide us in your truth, Lord. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss you all. Looking forward to the days that we can uh, gather again. Um, I hope that's soon. I really do. Uh, if you want to reach out and talk to me, uh, you can call me by all means. Our, my number is on our on our website. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, if you need prayer, uh, you can reach out on our website or uh, on our Facebook page. Um, Any way you want to contact us, please do. Um, I love you all, and uh, we'll hope to see you soon.